Thank you for organizers uh, to the invitation to this conference. It's my second time in this wonderful country. So today I will describe the different interesting techniques uh, which discovered by me uh, during my own research. So uh, I will consider different cases of persistence and malware. We are investigating Windows registry and uh, Windows uh, cryptography uh, in internals, something like uh, abusing WinAPI, uh, Crypto API, and abusing different applications like uh, uh, Microsoft Teams. And uh, the, the last one is about uh, how you can abuse Ross Hacker. So, a little bit uh, introduced me. I'm I'm the author of the three popular and interesting books about malware development. Uh, so, also <coughs> working on my own research on the malware and how you can use it, how you can re-implement it. You can just uh, use my books for you. So. A uh, little bit agenda. The first, uh, first of all, we we will consider uh, classic persistent tricks used by malware and by APTs and cyber criminals. The second one is how you can abuse Windows cryptography and the Windows uh, cryptography internals for uh, persistence mechanisms. And the last one is how you can abuse process hacker and second version of process hacker. Uh, this security bug is fixed in the third version. So let's get started. Uh, you know that the uh, malware techniques uh, nowadays you can use uh, different uh, kinds of um, tricks like uh, code injection, code execution, uh, payload encryption, string obfuscation, uh, or you can use encryption. Uh, payload and C2 communication in your red team operations when you re-implement malware or adversary simulation purposes. The next trick is of course uh, bypass sandboxes, AVs, ADRs and uh, evasion techniques, uh, also anti-analysis, anti-virtual machines or maybe anti-reverse engineering techniques. Of course the last one is malware persistence. So uh, there are some interesting uh, concepts in the malware persistence. Uh, you know that malware, uh, uh, the value of the malware is more than uh, interesting when they have a persistence mechanism. Yes, uh, after rebooting, after victims restarting, uh, or after some forensic tools, using some forensic tools. There are some interesting and well-known tricks used by popular APT groups like abusing in DLLs when you use, when you replace a DLL in the Windows registry or using uh, in the case of the, for example, APT39 or the next one is accessibility features, how you can abuse, you can abuse it, uh, which use it by APT3, APT21. Nine APT forty one from China. Also, you can abuse alternate data streams, Windows services, and uh, Win Logan helper deal. But the well known and uh, still use it uh, one of the most popular trick is uh, just DLL hijacking. Just using, uh, just replacing the legitimate DLLs you own able DLLs. So today I just want to show how I hunting some interesting tricks, for example, of course, you know classic tricks, yes, uh, classic tricks is well known, uh, easy re-implemented and uh, easily detected for uh, forensic tools with uh, CMs, EDRs and antivirus solutions or some um, uh, monitoring tools uh, and CM solutions, also open sources like Wazoo or anything else. But what about hunting the non-standard, some non-so well-known techniques malware persistence? For maybe you can research a Windows registry, maybe you can abuse different applications like uh, Windows applications or Windows internal uh, tricks. So uh, that's the result. The first one, the first case is the Internet Explorer case. 
Of course, many of us uh, can ask uh, that, uh, that Internet Explorer is no more used before, uh, before the, this nowadays. Or maybe cannot uh, abuse it because many of our, our victims cannot uh, use it, this tool. But uh, the good news for us is that uh, after researching this case, uh, I will show you later that uh, uh, tomorrow in my workshop I can show you that this tool is working and this case is working not only for Internet Explorer, also working for Microsoft Edge. And the good news for the red teamers, uh, for malware developers, are that um, Windows Explorer is not crashed and still worked and your operation system are abused for this case, in this case, for malware persistence, not crashed. The next one is my Microsoft Teams case, it's also fixed. I fixed it in two years ago, but sometimes you can abuse it also for uh, in Windows 10 and Windows 11 still. Uh, also, this worked uh, when you use some cryptographic operations. Windows error reporting case. Uh, you know, Windows error reporting have the interesting common that Verfault exe. And uh, when you run Verfault command with uh, these interesting parameters like P and R, uh, the good news is this command run Verfault in the um, uh, ref uh, reflective debugger mode. What is the reflective debugger mode? In this mode, uh, Windows Server reporting case, uh, they read this interesting uh, value from registry and uh, software, Microsoft Windows, Windows Server reporting hangs. Uh, it have uh, interesting value from their fault and it can be abused for persistence. How? Uh, the good news for us that it's not only read this value, it also can uh, use it value for uh, using the DLL and DLL pass. So we can just replace the evil DLL with your own uh, 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 alleged DLL with your own evil DLL. Uh, I will also show this uh, tomorrow in my workshop. What about when the win Windows cryptography? The good news for us is we also can uh, uh, consider different um, implementations of Windows internals. Uh, one of them is Windows cryptography. The first case. The first case, uh, persistence we are investigating different registries in Windows. You know, the Windows registry have many, many interesting case and values and paths for using uh, with Windows internals. One of them are Microsoft Windows cryptography paths. Uh, the good news for the red teamers and for the malware developers and cyber criminals is that a DLL in this registry can use uh, this offload mod expo. What is the offload mod expo? Offload mod expo is the value is use it when you when Windows internals, Windows cryptography in these internal uh, functions, when they use uh, some exponential functions like uh, <coughs> some mathematical functions in the Win API, or Crypto API. So when you run something like uh, open your browser, uh, uh, go to the HTTPS site, or maybe using some cloud operations with your email or something internal, any internal cryptography operations are abused, uh, use this, uh, uh, this registry in, ba in the background, so you can abuse it. The good news you, is that adversaries and cyber criminals can abuse it. But uh, I don't know are any APTs or adversaries use it in the world. This trick that is discovered by me and not fix it. The next one is also abusing Windows cryptography. But the another case, another DLL is Microsoft Enhanced ROC and IS cryptography provider, and the interesting case is image pass. Uh, it looks like like this. Uh, you can abuse. As you can see, we can just replace uh, ROC in the with your own. 
The good news is it's uh, profit. You can use it this DLL for persistence. And and uh, interesting case in this interesting case, uh, Microsoft uh, Defender Antivirus also use this cryptography key. We also use this registry pass for these internal cryptographic operations. So it's not only persistence, uh, just DLL hijacking. It's also something like uh, antivirus bypass if you can use it. Maybe some new adversaries have used it in the future, but I don't met it nowadays. The last one is uh, how you can abuse process hacker. The process hacker is an uh, interesting trick with process hacker. Um, I'm still researching different cases of uh, using different many ton of the Microsoft uh, applications and uh, uh, some some hacking tools also. Then uh, the interesting case is because many of us, uh, especially blue teamers, uh, especially <coughs> incident responders and threat hunters, using this tool for monitoring some processes, monitoring some behaviors, some malware behavior, and malware analysts also use it, this tool, so hackers can use this for uh, these purposes. The bad news is that in the second, uh, I, I don't know that uh, process hacker have a third version, uh, I just uh, wonder, then when, when, when I was reporting this bug, they uh, ask uh, they ask me why you can use still a second version because we we have a third version so if we are fixed it this uh, in new version but um, uh, in the world uh, but in, in practice many of us many of uh, malware analysts still use process hacker in second version uh, the first interesting thing is uh, how Process Hacker 2 is structured. Uh, we have different uh, different paths like uh, PHNT, Process Hacker NT. It's a system calls and structures and uh, re-implementation some uh, NT functions like uh, some function re-implementing some uh, Windows internal functions like uh, virtual alloc, mem copy, and uh, something like uh, creating new threads, and so on, so on. Then PHPH lib is algorithms implementation and um, interface functions with uh, working with Win API, working with uh, Windows services, working with uh, uh, processes, uh, opening processes, closing processes, uh, using uh, different tokens, abusing tokens. Uh, for the um, process monitoring and the plugins, plugins for just uh, for interaction with process hacker. And the last one is the external, uh, various functionality is, uh, we can use with uh, system operations, like also like um, some calls with function like uh, cryptographic operations also. But uh, I have uh, some kind of challenges. The first one is some issues with Kalan convention. In sometimes a different process hacker um, in, in the process hacker source from the GitHub, uh, some of the functions are still have uh, interesting Kalan convention. Is the decal example, for example, page open process, page open process token. But when you reverse engineer it, it it's not use this common convention. It's some maybe some bug, maybe some uh, protect from noobs. I, I don't know what what is it. Uh, the second uh, issue is uh, still crashing uh, on the x64 no, not not x64 uh, x uh, machines, but uh, the 32 architecture version is still crashing and some challenges when I reverse engineered this case, this case. And the last strange, uh, maybe it's it's not so strange, but for me it's uh, uh, wondering uh, that how they re-implemented some different structures, data structures like JSON parser, uh, um, something like uh, trees and balanced trees and balanced so sorting algorithms and re-implemented and creating the wheel. 
so using uh, also implemented some cryptographic functions like md5 and SHA1 avail trees and, uh, like JSON wrap. But uh, I just tried to find uh, the vulnerability in the process hacker too. So the first uh, hypothesis is a page load library. What is a page load library? Well, page load library represents uh, um, good function for good reimplementation of the uh, searching orders, so like protect from the LL hijacking. But uh, the interesting and the caveat is that this, uh, especially in this function, you can abuse uh, the LL hijacking. I don't know why it's uh, strange. So what is the hypothesis? We have uh, the potential DLL hijacking vulnerability In here, maybe here, maybe here, or this one. So I just, uh, I just doing a lot of work trying to find DLL hijacking from sources with many hours of reverse engineering and process hacker. So voila, I just found the interesting vulnerability in these versions of process hacking. The um, results of this research is that process hacker of these versions are, have uh, still uh, DLL hijacking vulnerability. Just setting Prosmon, let's recheck this hypothesis. So, oh, like pass, founding the pass ends, DLL. The result is the process hacker is missing several DLLs. One of them is UXTM is DLL, uh, this one. Uh, what the UXTM that DLL? It's something like uh, using um, user interface plugins for uh, inter interaction with Win API, interaction with Windows uh, uh, user interface. So, uh, still use it, this, and just recheck it. It's investigation, and just during the investigation found that we have a, a legit uh, UX stem that DLL. Uh, I also tried to reverse engineer it, this DLL, but um, uh, some issues and some in, in interesting um, uh, unexpected behaviors from, from, from this DLL. But uh, the good news, uh, I just run uh, the, um, the another trick of how you can abuse, not only replace this DLL, you also can use uh, killing defender or waking defender privileges trick. What's the trick? The main purpose of this trick is uh, you just uh, stolen the Windows defender token uh, and uh, you just uh, remove this token privileges uh, and the last trick is you just set the, uh, this, this token privilege to untrusted integrity level. So as a result your Windows Defender have a untrusted, uh, un untrusted integrity level. So proof of concept demo, uh, I just tried to, let me, let me show you the video demonstration of this. Oh. As you can see, it's uh, one of the last versions of Windows 10. Just running uh, and found uh, Microsoft Defender anti virus main engine uh, process. As you can see, have a, <coughs> a integrity level. It's integrity level. Then we abuse it a process hacker, a compiler, process hacker with uh, evil DLL and evil uh, driver. Uh, this is a well-known trick, but this is for proof of concept for this, how you can abuse it, not only just reverse shell, not only just another uh, weak uh, actions, you can also use it for more sophisticated actions like 
a killing defender. So, in the February and two in this year, I sent a bug report to the authors of the process hacker uh, to with proof of concept, and with the video proof of concept and the report, and just answer that we believe the issue was fixed in this second uh, version uh, and the one year ago in the third uh, version branch. But uh, the bad news is that uh, many of uh, malware analysts, uh, threat hunters and some incident responders, uh, digital forensic analysts are still used the second version, it's still not fixed in the second version. So the summary is uh, how you can use it uh, for Windows persistence mechanism, for malware persistence mechanisms. Um, you can use just deep dive into Windows internals, uh, but maybe try to reverse <laughs> some and found some uh, source codes, uh, for example, uh, some interesting projects uh, like re-implementing. Uh, for example, some some two or three months ago, I just found an interesting project in the GitHub, which uses uh, like porting Windows Defender to the Linux and something like this uh, with open source uh, code. So uh, if you want to find and hunting new persistent tricks, you are still using open source. Uh, you can still use it GitLab or GitHub uh, projects and just uh, try to research it. Well, maybe it's also still using, abusing DLLs, just not using more sophisticated, more interesting tricks, just replacing the DLL. It's how it's easy to find new interesting persistent tricks in the future. So thanks. If you want to some, uh, uh, if you want to deep dive into the malware researching or uh, malware developing or some adversary simulation cases, so for your research purposes or your red team operations, you can also just buy my book. Or I just want to, I, I can say I, I, I can send you this book in the electronic format, no problem, because. It's public now, in the hacking forums, <laughs> so <coughs> it's, a, it's a fact. <laughs> so uh, it's 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 not uh, it's not the benefits. Uh, the main benefits is uh, sharing knowledge, sharing knowledge, and for the community. So I'm happy to share my knowledge, share my experience with uh, the cybersecurity specialists around the world. So. And entry levels and also even for professionals. So thank you.